Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom Right in Corner. We have Monkey Balls, aka Nilsi, starting as the White Protoss. Also, another aka in this was uh, Dilf Toss, for what it's worth. Bottom left in corner, we have Nimpo, starting as the Yellow Zerg. This is the winner's bracket of Group B. So, granted, for the YouTubers out there, you had a weird skip where all of a sudden we were doing Group A, and we did the first game of Group B. Sepperman's also in this group. Uh, Nilsi automatically advanced to the winner's bracket because it's now a three-man group as Inhale actually withdrew from the group. So it is now two open slots, a lot of opportunities uh, to stay in the match overall. Nimpo off to a good start, having actually taken down uh, Supperman. We'll see if Nilsi, Nilsi, a strong competitor though, is one of those guys that uh, I've seen around and he's got good play. We've seen him in previous rounds of, I believe, Hasu League and had good stuff with it. Probe making its way top right. Immediate scout after pylon, which leads me to believe this is going to be a forge opener. We'll see if a second probe makes its way out because I think he wants to spot whether that's an early spawning pool build so he can sneak a faster nexus or not. Might even be a 12 nexus. We'll see. Spawning pool, however, has been planted off an over pool build, which means there are going to be potentially early zerglings out, which also means the forge needs to plant cannons down be a little bit safer. This is Vermeer, by the way, if I didn't manage to get that out. There's that forge out on the front. Let's see if this probe starts scouting as well. Yeah, it's going to walk its way out. And going to be a little bit of a disappointment, because especially with the, the downside of this is you've got two probes that aren't mining a lot in the early game. So if your opponent did go for a spawning pool build, and the other trick is if you build zerglings, let's see if there's a larva left enough to build enough zerglings to be a threat. Nimpo moving that drone out to go ahead and plant that natural expansion. Sometimes players will just build drones off this regardless rather than saving the larva. Um, so probe checking out that natural expansion, able to get a little bit of harassment at the very least to blockade that. Nimpo going to just drop his third someplace else. And two Zerg uh, so at least two Zerglings gonna be out on the map. But this does, and seeing the forge out here, let's see if additional Zerglings get constructed. No, no additional. So showing the three eggs at the very least but this is going to create a delay. It looks like a cannon and an X is going to be dropped simultaneously for Nilsi. I'm going to wait on dropping that forge. Should be safe and now feels very, very safe, I assume. Was maybe thinking about pulling probes off the line to defend otherwise to get that economic pullback. So natural expansion will be a little bit harder to saturate. This is going to be two hatchery gas before that third hatchery. Not that Zerg don't end up building drones on site anyway, but Nimpo just keeping it lighter on the Zergling count. Gateway now on the front. This is going to put Nilsi in a bit more of a passive opener. Usually it's Forge first. You don't end up with large amounts of Zelts in the mid game to kind of march around all over the place. Third base being constructed now at the natural. The Zergling's able to get attack damage on that probe. But I think he wants to hang out and see whether the other thing with the forge openers is oftentimes that does leave you a bit more vulnerable to 973, although a lot of players these days won't do that if the probe scout's in their face just because of the the defense. Looks like the probe, just they know to defend. The probe's going to exit a little bit early. Another probe making its way out. Interesting. So probe, this probe's still full health. I'm kind of curious what the, the logic was behind this. I'm just going to tag team it out, high five each other as they're making way across. A little bit of lost mining time as a result of that. But anyway, we are seeing a tech to layer rather than Hydrolysten. Let's see if this probe is able to make its way across. Oh, I see. Clever. So one probe was, okay. So mechanics of Brood War. If you take a probe and you click on a mineral patch, what ends up happening is it will go through anything and be able to make it back. So Nilsi, did that and then drew his main probe back because he knew this probe, having spotted the minerals for him, would be able to get right back into the main regardless of that Zergling blockade. So doing that, more Zerglings have now been produced, was able to confirm the lair. Very clever play, actually, and a good way to guarantee scouting information. Pretty decent saturation. At what I'm still going to call the third, even though it was the second base. Spire being dropped. But now he knows you should get the Stargate up. You should get some protective cannons in the rear lines. A couple Zealots being hidden away from that Overlord to disguise their numbers, potentially, in the mid game. Interestingly enough, 
rather than plus one weapons being upgraded, we're seeing plus one armor, maybe to get a jump on some high Templar tech to allow those Templar to be a little bit more effective in the mid game. There's a Citadel of Vadoon already, but that can help protect the high Templar against Mutalisk fire, make them a little bit beefier. I don't think I've seen uh, this quite often and also maybe feeling a little bit more comfor uh, comfortable with that upgrade knowing that it's gonna finish with the lack of 973 uh, towards the front. So the other advantage of this is this initial Corsair can kill that Overlord on the front and doesn't have to worry about pushing out uh, from there. Fourth hatch being dropped and a fifth hatch at that natural expansion. I assume there's going to be a fullback to Hydralisk, but it is possible Nimpo is just going to try to play it five hatch or maybe even six hatch Mutalisk style. Waiting to see what that drone turns into and whether we see something plop back in the lair after the initial scourge are fielded. Creep colonies defensively out on the front. Five Zealots marching out. This is going to be close. There's not a lot of Zerglings, and they're going to need these Creep Colonies to provide that defense. Do we see initial Zerglings being constructed? No. And the Mutalisks also not taking flight as well. So no construction of Mutalisks or Scourge or any other defense. So the Zealots actually might be able to walk past these Zerglings initially. Looks like holding the line rather than going for the dash across. They don't have that Zealot leg speed as of yet. Initial Corsair actually initially making its way out, but walking right up to something colonies right there. And this feels a little bit like an overdedication. The Zealots being cleaned up very easily. And I don't, maybe a drone being wiped out. An Overlord did get take, taken out as the Scourge. You could hear that happening in the background behind with the Zealots. Some initial Mutalisks out, but Nimpo way behind in the worker count. He needs to start. One advantage here is clearing out all of those Zealots. He knows he can be a little bit more aggressive with his economy and fill that drone count in. Yeah, you just see a big round of drones, a couple Scourge as well. See if he gets aggressive with the Mutalus. We do have a cannon defensively, two cannons at the natural expansion, two cannons at the main. That's opened up a bit. The Corsair out of position to provide some support though. Additional Scourge are here to protect the Overlords. So the Mutalus wandering in. Oh, and that High Templar may be at risk as well. A couple probes getting picked off. One Mutalisk, however, getting hit in between those three cannons. Plus one armor has finished. The Corsair making its way back to the main. Nilsi now has the trouble where, yeah, he's got a High Templar out. I, I believe he's going to have Psystorm research, but it's going to be a while before he can really apply pressure to Nimpo. So Nimpo, ooh, actually even able to sweep out into the main. Looks like he's going to try to get some additional hits and is able to get the High Templar before Psystorm was finished. Two Mutalisks lose their life, but that Corsair, that was a little bit of an overkill there, but the Corsair also going to get wiped out. And this is where Nimpo has options. He could tack on with that a lot of additional Mutalisks, which looks like that is what he's going to do, and go for some heavy harassment here, or he could just grab, it looks like he's going to go up to six hatch muta, or he could just grab a bunch of additional expansions and drone up. It looks like he's kind of meeting halfway. He's going to go for Lurker Tech, building a couple additional mutas, Filling out that drone count. He's currently in the lead right there. Has some additional gateways going down. He does need to seal some sort of advantage here in the mid game because with these additional gateways and that double forge and no evolution chamber that I see out on the map as of yet, if Ninpo doesn't do some catastrophic damage to Nilsi before that large army grows, he will be behind in overall upgrades for the long haul, but at least he's wandering in and scouting all of it. Ooh, and more High Templar getting picked off. Turning around, great Psy Storm on those Mutalists, picking off two of them, and another good follow-up Psy Storm, weakening the rest of them. But I don't see any movements to grab a fourth. It looks like Lurker Tech being upgraded. I don't see an Evolution Chamber as well. So I'm not going to call Nilsi. So he's not in a great position, but I'm not going to call him out of it yet. Hopefully he can get a Robotics Facility down. If he goes for a good Dragoon Flood or gets some really key Psy Storms, Still might be able to push out and make something happen. Plus one weapon finish. He does have Zealot leg speed. He's got that. So he, these Zealots are beefy. Nimpo wanting to play more of a macro defensive style right here. Lurker is morphing right there. Now grabbing his fourth, but this feels very late to when he could and should take it, honestly. And I don't know that he's going to be able to, to defend this. A couple of Mutalists harassing because there's not a lot of anti-air in this composition. I'm wondering if some of these... 
High Templar are going to morph into an Archon, and that will be our defense on the front. Critically, though, for Nilsi, I do not see a Robo. So if he marches out with these Zealots into the lines, there's going to be plenty of Lurkers to defend, but that 9 o'clock base still openly exposed. So the Zealots grouping up to march out. The High Templar have no anti-air support, so the Mutalists are still going to hold this back, so a single Zealot able to sneak out. It looks like a single High Templar wandering out wants to hit a Psy Storm, so trying to bait these Mutalisks away. But yeah, Nelsie's going to have to wait. And is this... Not, no, this is just pylons, no robo, unfortunately. Is getting Dragoons out. Psy Storm looks like it did hit the Mutalisk, but another High Templar getting picked off. Nimpo now with the supply lead. So should comfortably be able to work with that fourth and also has an opportunity to seal Nilsi in. I will say Nilsi now with that surge with behind all these gateways, all he needs is an observer that's well protected. And he could just straight up run over Nimpo, particularly because he's got level two armor. No movement towards plus three weapons, so he, he does have the upgrade advantage overall. But these lurkers are going to be a huge problem. And the mutalisks as well, if they grow in number. Because there could be a quick tech switch from Nimpo with what will be four gas as soon as he gets this up and running. Doesn't look like it's saturated as of yet. The zealot finding it. And actually, that lone zealot might be sufficient to finish that out. But now Nilsi attacking forward. Now is going to discover... Oh, is this hold position lurker? That's clever. Nimpo living up to his name in the red, waiting for the hold position lurker for that entire army to dedicate, now unleashing his fury. The Zealot's eating a huge amount of damage. Yeah, Nelsie now going to back up. Now that's got to be one of those whelp moments where, yeah, you went for that big gateway flood, but ooh, huge side storm over that. Another good side storm over the Hydralisk line. A couple Dragoons getting pulled out of position. It looks like they're going to go ahead and re-engage as the Lurkers aren't pressing forward to support, but Nimpo actually happy to go ahead and play defensive here. Some Hydralis able to clear out that Zealot to 9 o'clock, not yet saturated at that location. Also with the Double Forge not continuing to spin, there's the Robotics Facility about halfway finished, so it's going to be a waiting game. And the Evolution Chamber has planted, and I'm hoping to see some additional Evolution Chambers. So the wild card for Nilsi is going to be upgrades here. The wild card for Nimpo is going to be those Lurkers able to sneak in and pick off another High Templar. Still... Supply count's even. Usually that puts Zerg ahead. 9 o'clock base not yet saturated. And Nilsi is passive as Nimpo's playing. A single Mulus being migrated up there. Might be able to sneak a probe out to grab that third. Some Zerglings walking that way direction. A massive amount of Lurkers pressing forward. The Observer is still not here. Sidestorm on the bunch Lurkers. And the Hydra is pressing in. Now keep in mind, between the Psy Storm and those upgrades, Nimpo is walking into a more formidable attack force. But with the lack of observers, these lurkers still can create a lot of frustration and shred through this army rather rapidly. Nilsi again with a huge supply lead. First observer about halfway finished. As soon as that observer's out, we could see a sudden turn in the tide. Big side storm along that left-hand edge. Lurkers still bunched up to the north. The Hydralis absolutely melting to the Dragoon Zealot composition. The Zealots that are getting stranded out to the north on top of those Lurker lines, however, getting obliterated. And the High Templar look like are out of energy. Still some damage happening. First Observer pressing out. Unfortunately for Nilsi right now, lost the supply lead, but... Still has the upgrade lead if he can just en engage army versus heads up army. That's not what's happening right here is a couple Dragoons are getting stranded. You'll see now turning around re-engaging great side storm over that northern edge of Hydralis pressing into the northern grouping and now Nimpo potentially in trouble behind all of a sudden 30 supply as Nilsi's army crashing down on top of him. He doesn't have a lot of lurkers behind it and he wasn't able to pick off the observer overhead so that observer count going to continue the forges are still remaining silent it looks like Nilsi wants to do it with just the upgrades he's got and I don't think Nimbo 
is going to be able to hold this back. 30 supply lead. More overlords getting picked off in open field. This is a gigantic Protoss army. Walking in. Hydralisks there in large amounts. Archon morphing. There is another side storm. Catching a, a good amount of those Hydralisks. The Hydralisks trying to re-engage. Hoping they are going to get favorable trades against these Dragoons. But with that armor upgrade, it's not happening. 40 supply lead still for Nilsi. But backing off, seeing all of these Hydralisks and not having... Storm otherwise still hasn't grabbed his third and he needs to get a move on zealot able to get three kills to the north it looks like still ha that hasn't been saturated as of yet exchange is still happening across the southern spoke the zealot finally getting taken care of a bunch of hatcheries out here for nimpo but he needs to get drones out to the nine o'clock get that gas up and established maybe get hive tech up and running at the very least he's got plus one weapons and plus two weapons now on the way Couple Zerglings sneaking across to maybe deny that third, but the third's still not out. Nilsi now mined out at his main. So he's basically all in with the army he's got. So needs to make sure this presses in and counts, then he's able to wipe things out. Starting to sail forward. The Observer is leading the way with the Zealots. The Zealots now backing off as the Lurker line moving up. Some good side storms. Over overlords and everything else, a lot of hydros to the north. It looks like Nimpo was able to micro, or sorry, macro a little bit to fill in the troop count. He can replenish these hydralisks, where Nilsi cannot really afford to replenish his army equivalently, and that sitting those zealots sitting under side storm is not a good indicator. Army looking threadbare on both sides. More hydralisks coming from the north, and it looks like that is going to be sufficient for Nimpo. To go ahead, I'm not sure why the camera decided to go there for a second. Nimpo able to clear it out, and now without a third in hand, and without continuation upgrades, Nilsi, his odds of winning this match are evaporating. Nimpo still mining, now forcing the issue with his Hydralisks. Lurker burrowing forward. Good side storms. Peeling out some of what's left, but there's not a lot of army. And honestly, this isn't a sufficient army to feel comfortable grabbing a third base. And Nilsi, as he's down to his last minerals, is starting to huddle up. This is usually the army he wanted to have crashing that natural expansion. Instead, Nimpo taking control of the southern spoke. Plus, he knows there's no third base. Sending out a Zergling just to make sure that a third base wasn't snuck anyplace else. It looks like that was cleared out to the bottom right. Probes are going to try to distance mine there for Nilsi. Nimpo now with a 10 supply lead. A lot of workers. Still not... Oh, man, a lot of them are idle there to the north, however. Huge side storm there. Follow-up side storm over the lurker line. Side storm might be enough to keep Nilsi in it, or at least buy him some time to get these minerals in the bank. Nimpo hunting that army out to the front doesn't even realize that the distance mining's happening here in the interim. So Nilsi's still kicking. Archon starting to push forward. Oh man, the drone's still idle there to the 9 o'clock. If those, if those drones were mining, I think this, that might have been game. The Zealot's able to sneak through that gap. Third looking thin. Natural expansion looking thin. Might... Have the opposite problem now for Impo, uh, for Nimpo. And if this zealot wanders up to the 9 o'clock, that actually might do Nimpo a favor where he's like, oh, wait, I got a bunch of drones up here that I need to do something with. So there's an attack happening. I don't know if that's going to wake him up. Lurker's starting to march mid. More great size storms. Catching all sorts of hydralists there on the front. Archon's being cleared out. Now the probe's on their walk, getting exposed. There's GG from Nilsi, realizing he just wasn't going to have enough economy to keep it working. So despite the lack of mining here at the 9, Nimpo able to clean the matchup, able to take game one. It is a best of three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.